the Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg welcomes you to this graduation ceremony. Due to security reasons, you are requested not to leave the auditorium before the end of the proceedings. Please note that photos and videos must be taken from your seats. Please do not get up and walk around inside the auditorium. As soon as the procession leaves the auditorium, you are requested to rise and remain standing until the procession and guests of honour have left the auditorium. A kind yet important request. Please only applaud after the student's name has been read out and only applaud until the student has been capped in order to give other graduates the opportunity to have an audible readout of their names. Please also note that no whistles are allowed for applause, only clapping of hands and ululating. You are cordially invited to enjoy refreshments in the foyer after the ceremony. A final request. If you have a cell phone in your possession, please switch it off or put it on silent. Ladies and gentlemen, the procession will now enter the auditorium. You are requested to rise and remain standing until the members of the procession have taken their seats. Viva Tacademia, 
Los profesores Viva ta academia Viva ta profesores Viva ta membrum colibet Viva ta membrum colibet Semper sin si flore Semper sin si flore Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Sanbarani, Tabela, Kuyamora. A warm welcome. It's a bit cold here in this venue, but a warm welcome to each and every one of you uh, to this morning's graduation ceremony, and a particular warm welcome to all our graduates uh, this morning who will be walking across the stage. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I now declare this meeting as a lawful congregation of the University of Johannesburg. You may take your seats. Thank you. <coughs> Rose in my girl, my sitan dane, si bem moe amunye, jenga zinge losi. Rose in my girl, my sitan dane, Singa kata zanemoe. Rose in my girl, my sitan dane. Si bemoe amunye, jenga zinge losi. Rose in my girl, my sitan dane. Singa kata zanemoe. Masi kulege kunkulu nkulu Buguti mage asi pe amanda Sushulo into enye kupela Kumasi hama elklabe Masi kulege kunkulu nkulu Uti mage asi pe amanda sushulo into enye kupela kumasi hama yemklabe kumasi hama yemklabe kumasi hama yemklabe. voices, a big round of applause. Good morning. Good morning. Chancellor, Mr. Marty, the SRC President, Executive Dean of the Faculty of Education, Professor Sarah Kravet, Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, Professor Camilla Naidu, members of Senate and academics here present, graduates, guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. On behalf of the council and the executive management and staff of the University of Johannesburg, it gives me great pleasure to welcome all our university graduates and their guests to this graduation ceremony. Graduations are both ends and beginnings. The graduation of a student from a university marks the successful completion of a course of study. At the same time, it marks the start of something else. For some, that something else is another degree. For others, it is entrance into the world of work. Whatever the something else may be, this solemn ritual is a time for graduates to celebrate with their families the achievements of a major milestone in their lives. Of course, a milestone is just a point in a longer journey. 
it is up to each of us to determine the direction of that journey. At UJ, we seek to support our students in their own greater journeys by helping them to unleashing their own potential and to unlocking their creativity so that they can make their unique contributions to innovation in their respective fields of study. The past few years were momentous for higher education in South Africa. Our students have brought to the surface real concerns about transformation, real concerns about equitable fee structure and a quest for a decolonized education. These critical moments in our history provided us with the opportunity to reflect on our curriculum and teaching practice in order to develop innovative solutions to address these important matters. Our commitment for access to education is demonstrated by the university's many efforts to provide significant financial aid and other essential support to our most vulnerable students. We are proud of our record and status as one of the most transformed universities in the country. We provide access and as we will witness today, consequential success. UJ has grown into a world-class, internationally recognized university and we have more than 50,000 students registered. Our global stature and academic depth are acknowledged by reputation, reputable higher education ranking systems the world over. As we move into a significant era of transformation in higher education, UJ continues to build on its successes and to break new ground. We are an international university of choice, anchored in Africa, dynamically shaping the future. Our vision is to empower our students to be leaders in the fourth industrial revolution where technology is infused in our workplace, our homes, and indeed in all our aspects of life. Graduates, you have been groomed for leadership. You are now equipped to join the world of work, locally and abroad. As you embark on your selected career, we know that you will use your successes and your strengths to make positive contributions to society as responsible corporate citizens as well as future leaders. As you glow with justified pride in your successes, please bear in mind that you have not walked this journey alone. Many of those who have supported and guided you are present here today. Please serve them as well as your communities with pride. With your UJ qualification, you are joining an elite worldwide UJ alumni community. We encourage you to become an active member of the UJ convocation. By staying actively engaged with UJ, you can make a real contribution, both to our academic project and to those who will study after you. You have chosen well by studying at UJ. Even though we will miss you, now is your time to go and make your mark. Thank you very much, Riale Bukasiabonga, Faya Danke. Chancellor, I now request the Executive Dean, Professor Sarah Ravet of the Faculty of Education, as well as the Acting Executive Dean, Professor Camilla Naidu of the Faculty of Humanities, to introduce the faculties and thereafter the candidates who complied with all the requirements for their respective qualifications. Chancellor, I now have the honor of introducing the Faculty of Humanities. Often people ask, what is the point of humanities? You don't build things like engineers or discover things in laboratories like scientists or learn how to keep accounts. Sure, it might be interesting to learn how things used to be historically or to think about big philosophical or religious questions or learn to speak another language or understand the nature of society or the human mind. Big ideas might be interesting, 
but are they useful to the student, to the employer, or to society at large? For us in the humanities, there is a simple answer to this question. The answer is that ideas matter. Ideas matter because they shape the way we behave, and the way we behave shapes the world. Let's take the example of democracy. Nobody discovered democracy in a laboratory. Nobody painted it. Nobody painted democracy or assembled it in a factory. Nobody can write software that will make or improve democracy or build a computer that will make democracy run smoother. The disciplines in the humanities are incredibly diverse, but they share a particular thread. They teach us to think critically and to learn to become comfortable dealing with ideas that were formerly out of our comfort zone. And this is a skill employers especially value. There are a lot of statistics that show that humanities graduates do exceptionally well in the job market. But our favorite is a recent survey showing that 60% of CEOs are humanities graduates. The ability to reason, to think critically, to research, to analyze, and to express yourself with clarity and originality are necessary in the modern workplace, where the job for life is increasingly scarce. In a highly competitive market-dominated world, innovation is always necessary in order to survive or thrive. Innovation is often associated with technology, um, and we often see innovation as a technological phenomenon, especially in this fourth industrial revolution. But for innovations to be successful, we need ingredients from the humanities. We need critical thinking, we need to understand people, how they think, how they feel, and how they behave, even as they continually change as human beings in conditions that may challenge them in new or different ways. This is where the degree in the humanities places our graduates at an advantage. The honors graduates that we are celebrating today have all examined the meanings of being human, how to think critically about the human condition and our relationship to one another and the world in which we live. So you as graduates are therefore in a unique position to pursue careers that are new, innovative, and entrepreneurial. The multivaried nature of your degrees will enable you to think in a flexible way, to see things from various angles, and to adapt quickly to change. These are all important skills in the working world of tomorrow. But humanities graduates are useful in another way too. Perhaps this is even more important. Studying the humanities disciplines may make us become better citizens. In a democracy, the ability of citizens to think critically and clearly and compassionately with humanity is of the utmost importance. Perhaps compassion is not necessary for critical thinking, but critical thinking is necessary for true compassion, for true humanity. Otherwise, we are capable only of good intentions in a democracy where we govern ourselves, it is not only our hearts that matter, but also our heads. It is the citizens who choose the leaders and who hold the leaders to account. No computer, however good, can do this. No experiment can tell us who to elect to govern us. No factory can assemble the perfect president. Our ability to think critically is central to our ability to make good judgments and to govern ourselves. So parents, in case you had any doubt about whether your children have studied something useful, rest assured, their achievements here and the knowledge they have gained in our faculty at UJ make them deeply valuable, not just as employees, but as human beings, as citizens of their nations and of our global society, better equipped to deal with adversity or good fortune that may befall them or others. And that is truly something to be proud of. So we wish our graduates a great future. I thank you, Kiela Bocha and Gia Bonga. <laughs> Chancellor, I now introduce to you the candidates who complied with all the requirements for the respective qualifications in order for you to confer or award such qualifications.
By virtue of the powers vested in me, I will now confer and award the respective qualifications on the candidates introduced to me by the Executive Dean and to the candidates who are absent but who have complied with all the requirements for the qualifications. <laughs> Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree Bachelor of Arts Honours on the following candidates. Amor Blichnow, with distinction. <laughs> Mona K. Brantley. Jaffa Asima Chiosa. <laughs> Terence Tendai Chitapi. Munsi Muro Crispin. <laughs> Nikita Nolin Han with distinction. <laughs> Don Kululeko. What you? <laughs> Kiano Letoshka Jansen. <laughs> Jane Kumalo. Suleiman Kindi with distinction. <laughs> Sherry Klee. <laughs> Tracy Nola Kobango. Seipati Palesa Maboya. <laughs> Linda Kutle Mabusa. <laughs> Debra Nozipo Magua. Muhammad Rafiq Muhammad Akawaya. <laughs> Keliwe Zandile Bongiwe Malinga. <laughs> Talent Melissa Maseko. Innocentia Matabula. (Applause) 
Molibi Tabang Matsi. Zimvo Mavume. Nonkuleleko Nolutando Mbata. Lusanda Mbeje. Mary Mbiti. Tandi Eva Mbonane. Cleorisha Mercedes McNeil. Londeka Mslongo. Linda Kusle Mkiz, Mkize. Precious Bonolo Moroke. Nka Fotseng Laurentia Motlong. Ntabiseng Tsitsi Motlong. Sabongile Mukono Moyo with distinction. Tondani Mulovetsi Niani Birdith Netu. Nom Fondo Mpleko Kagiso Nkadimeng Mpo Grace Morimasi Nchong Desiree and Tokoza, Bootle and Tuli. <laughs> Mosa, Tlabirwa and Tuampe. <laughs> Sinolwazi and Tleli Kumalo. Parwes Akta Perbokos. <laughs> Seipati Margaret Ralenkoani. <laughs> Ng 
Unguana Moniane Silva Ranale. Colette Saldana with distinction. <laughs> Wayne Samuel Saldana with distinction. <laughs> Mohammed Ibrahim Sidat. Tengia Selengbe. Koitsioni Serobi. Sipiwe Jeki Shabangu. Dumezulu Shiburi. <laughs> and Suya Singh. <laughs> Loiso Tele. Masejo Elizabeth Tire. <laughs> Tiamo Matebe Tlapi. Refilwe Caroline Shabalala. <laughs> Letitia van Rensburg with distinction. <laughs> Carla Westrad. Nadine Shirley Williams. <laughs> Sandile Siabonga Zulu. <laughs> Chancellor, I now, uh, apologies. Uh, yeah, Chancellor, I, um, give me a minute. Oh, I'm done. Chancellor, I now have the honor of introducing the Faculty of Education. The programs that we offer in the Faculty of Education is contextually grounded and future-oriented. Future Thus, we aim to develop teacher candidates and in-service teachers for local demands and circumstances while providing them with the tools to deal with the demands of a fast-changing world, which is increasingly driven by technology. We strive towards dynamic knowledge-making for the 21st century this requires that our work should be cutting edge, ro cutting edge, robust, and globally relevant. To this end, the faculty launched two highly successful online master's degrees in 2018, namely a master's in education management and leadership and a master's in information and communication technology. These programs attract students around the globe. 
Other prominent fields of study in the faculty are higher education, childhood education, science education, and educational psychology, including neurodevelopmental neuro learning needs. The faculty houses four National Research Foundation chairs. Some of the objectives of these prestigious chairs are to improve South Africa's international research and innovative, innovative competit competitiveness while responding to local challenges. Two other chairs focus on education in childhood. The third chair focuses on teaching and learning in post-school education, and the fourth chair on community adult and worker education. So we do teaching and we do research. And then we also work with schools. Two schools are associated with the faculty. The faculty is the guardian of the UJ Metropolitan Academy, a secondary school with a track record of attaining excellent results. The Funda Uchabule School is situated on the Soweto campus. This primary school serves the Soweto community and it also functions as an education laboratory and teacher education facility for the faculty. I recently had the privilege to attend a talk of the astronaut Terry Wiltz at an education symposium in Hong Kong. He was involved in two space flights, a two-week mission on board the Space Shuttle Endeavour, and a 200-day flight to the space station. He spoke about his educational journey, and specifically also about his teachers those people who helped him on his education journey. He noted that whenever he has a chance, he goes back to his teachers to thank them. He said, when you teach kids, you never know what they'll become, but you will have an impact on their lives. These are powerful words for all of us involved in education. We have an impact on the lives of those who we teach. I hope it's always a positive impact. To you, our graduating students, a warm word of congratulations. Go and impact lives in a positive way. Be the change that you want to see. I thank you. Kiala Bocha, Nyabonga, Bai Danki. Chancellor, I now introduce you to the candidates who complied with all the requirements for the respective qualifications in order for you to confer or award such qualifications. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I will now confer and award the respective qualifications on the candidates introduced to me by the Executive Dean and to the candidates who are absent, but who have complied with all the requirements for the qualification. Chancellor, I'm honored to request you to confer the degree Bachelor of Education Foundation Face Teaching on the following candidates. Shanae Celine Davies. Masehu Valencia Kewakae. Kimberly Egypt Kwepan. Chancellor. I'm honored to request you to confer the degree Bachelor of Education Intermediate Phase Teaching on the following candidates. Vernon De Vere. Linuguse Engel Mchangase. Zinse Faith Kwabe.
Happy Kunisile Shusha. <laughs> Chancellor, I'm honored to request you to confer the degree Baccalaureus Educationis Further Education and Training on the following candidates. Kilda Corza. Sipiwe Moses and Corsi. Lungiswa Yunus Sikwakwa. Sipiwe Rose Sikosana. Thank you. Chancellor, I'm honored to to request you to confer the degree Bachelor of Education, Senior Phase, and Further Education and Training on the following candidates. Bontle Johanna Mokopa. <laughs> Bongumusa Kabini. Okay, let's give, uh, no, no, I please want to read his name, if we could be quiet for one moment. Thank you. Innocent Kwanele Kwaho. Charmaine Maputa. Lungisani Mbulawa. A quick one. Okay. Bekezela Wellington Mchunu. You must go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's settle down, please. Bulelani Abongili Atwil Mfebe. Thank you. Simiso Linda Basil Nube. Paliti Marwale Mulatudi. There you are. Tandu Nsapo. Tabang Nomwe Bewu. Spamandla Gift Nchangase. Nondumiso Gladness Nkumalo. Wayne Hendrick Pearson. Yes. 
Ordi ke filwe pahe. Si bongi seni si gaba. Okay, that's. Thank you. Veronica Ntombi Kaise Sikonde. Nkolisi Mzwetu Ngwenya. Spesite Zamane. Felicity Nompumulelo Zondo. <laughs> Chancellor, I'm honored to request you to award the Postgraduate Certificate in Education to the following candidates. Saria Friedrichs. Moses Jason Mtinkulu. <laughs> Renee C. Party Ramosa. <laughs> Chancellor, I'm honored to request you to award the postgraduate diploma higher education to the following candidates, Rudo Lavender Nyakudja. <laughs> Klingue Fortunate Zondi. <laughs> Chancellor. I'm honored to request you to confer the degree Baccalaureus Educationis Honoribus on the following candidates. Gizani Given Makaringe. <laughs> Thank you. Mutupei Michael Mucharini. As we finally Elsie Chikalange. <laughs> Chancellor, I'm honored to request you to confer the degree Bachelor of Education honors on the following candidates. See Tati Adams. We see Faneuil Bunce. <laughs> Notandu Portia Magabula. <laughs> Rasosi Simon Momshugi. Zamile Leratu Mosui. <laughs> Wisisiwe Charmaine Ngamlana. <laughs> Chancellor. I'm honored to request you to confer the degree Master of Education on the following candidates. Nadim Ahmed. Ayan Chetan.
Tatiwa Makula. Shirin Pumzile Mdunjana. Rulani Mostert with distinction. Puleng Dora Motseki. Moyakazi Evelyn Ntinkulu. Hangwani Christina Mudau. Leratu Bernice Ndabazita. Daniela Texera. <laughs> Nicola Lee Winson with distinction. Chancellor, the degree Master of Education has already been conferred at the previous ceremony with distinction on Ms. Gabrielle de Freitas. Ms. de Freitas is awarded the Chancellor's Medal for the most meritorious master study in the Faculty of Education for the academic year 2018. You are requested to present the medal to the candidate. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting Henri Sara Bezuidnoot, who has complied with all the requirements for the degree Philosophiae Doctor in Education with a thesis entitled Input for Young Children's Number Concept Development, prepared under the supervision of Professor E. e. Henning and co-supervision of Professor C. Fitzpatrick and Professor L. Ragpot. I now request the supervisor to read out an abstract of the study. Chancellor, the candidate's thesis investigated the intersect of three cognitive skills and early number competence. Of, at the beginning of grade R, it showed that specific maths vocabulary was the strongest indicator of success in grade one. From the view of mathematical cognition research, specifically the development of early numeracy, the children were not prepared for the demanding grade one curriculum for which they needed a firm grasp of the cardinality of number concepts. The study contributes to the growing body of evidence-based research about early numeracy learning in South Africa, emphasizing that learning counting lists is not sufficient for coming to understand early number conceptually. <laughs> Chancellor, I now request you to confer the degree for the Sufi doctor on this candidate.
ladies and gentlemen, by virtue of the powers vested in me, I now confer the degree Philosophy Doctor Educationist on Henri Sara Zadenhoff. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting Rina Durant, who has complied with all the requirements for the degree of Philosophia Doctor in Education with a thesis entitled, A Strategy for the Integration of Mathematical Modeling into the Formal Education of Mathematics Student Teachers, prepared under the supervision of Professor G. V. Lautenbach. I now request the supervisor to read out an abstract of the study. Chancellor, this study exposed student teachers as both mathematical modelers and facilitators of mathematical modeling to a well-planned set of modeling activities while also monitoring their developing mathematical modeling competencies. Their change in attitude towards such activities was also measured over time, including enjoyment, value, self-confidence, and motivation. Based on a pragmatic worldview, a design-based research approach was conducted in three phases, focusing firstly on relevance, guided by a needs analysis, secondly, on consistency and practicality via the design and implementation of two research cy cycles, and lastly, on effectiveness by means of reflective analysis and evaluation. The simultaneous use of theory and practice in the cyclic process of design-based research provides a rich understanding of student teachers' meaningful teaching and learning of mathematical modeling and has led to the development of local instructional theory and a set of validated design principles. Chancellor, I now request you to confer the degree Philosophia Doctor on this candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, by virtue of the powers vested in me, I now confer the degree Philosophia Doctor Educationist on Rena Durant. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting Pumoni Governor, who has complied with all the requirements for the degree of Philosophy Doctor in Education with a thesis entitled, Grade 3 Teachers' Formative Assessment Practices in Selected Mathematics Lessons, prepared under the supervision of Professor E. Hennen and co-supervision of Professor K. Luneta. I now request the supervisor to read out an abstract of the study. The candidate designed her thesis to add to the corpus of mathematics classroom studies in a very particular way, extracting teachers' formative assessment practices in everyday settings. She examined how teachers implemented the assessment requirements of the national school curriculum and found that although they knew the nomenclature of the policy, the teachers found it hard to implement and operationalize continuous assessment that assists learners to form concepts and to learn procedures of mathematics. She concludes that professional development workshops have had little resonance in the teaching of a sample of teachers whom she studied. In the middle class schools where she conducted her research, the teachers had not adopted practices of true pedagogies of assessment even though they purported to know the strategies and the techniques. 
Her innovative design for classroom research is in itself a contribution to educational research design, as is the protocol of her fine-grained analytical work. Chancellor, I now request you to confer the degree of Philosophia Doctor on this candidate. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I now confer the degree Philosophia Doctor Educationist on Pumani Davinder. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting Heshma Nishain Harvey, who has complied with all the requirements for the degree of Philosophia Doctor in Education with a thesis entitled, A Human-Centered Design Approach to Fashion Design Education, prepared under the supervision of Professor P.J. Ankovitz and co-supervision of Dr. C. F. Van Us. I now require the supervisor to read out an abstract of the study. Chancellor, the candidate's doctoral study aimed to identify, explore, and outline the extent to which a human-centered design approach might add value to fashion design education at institutions of higher learning. The assessors confirmed the novelty of the study as it is among the first doctoral studies on human-centered fashion design education both nationally and internationally. The theoretical framework that underpinned the study was anchored in three fields, namely design and technology education, vocational or craft education, and fashion design praxis. The candidate undertook design-based research among undergraduate fashion design students, their lecturers, and fashion designers to devise principles from theory and from, and from professional fashion design practice with which to design a teaching intervention. The study yielded nine human-centered design principles, 16 fashion design praxis principles, and 16 design education principles that can be utilized in fashion design education and can serve as a guideline for the development of fashion design curricula. Chancellor, I now request you to confer the degree Philosophia Doctor on this candidate. Uh, By virtue of the powers vested in me, I now confer the degree Philosophy a Doctor Educationist on Reshma Nishan Harvey. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting Tionge Weddington Salka, who has complied with all the requirements for the degree of Philosophia Doctor in Education, with a thesis entitled, An Exploration of Mathematics Classroom Culture in Selected Early Grade Mathematics Classrooms in Malawi, prepared under the supervision of Professor E. Henning and co-supervision of Professor N. 
F. Peterson. I now request the supervisor to read out an abstract of the study. <laughs> Chancellor, the candidate investigated the classroom culture in early grade mathematics classrooms in Malawi. He situated the research problem in current theories of children's mathematics learning, specifically to search for signs of learning and of teaching. Those signs that are coherent with current theory of learning, which argues that foundations for mathematics learning are laid in the early grades. His study provides a thick description of the culture of selected standard one mathematics classrooms in 